Alrighty, welcome back. We've been discussing the ophthalmologic exam. One of the most important parts of the exam is actually the pupil exam. We're going to go into a little discussion here about what a normal pupil exam should look like. For many of you, this might be very simple. We will discuss the pupil pathways later, but basically what you need to know is that when you shine light in one eye, you're actually going to get constriction of both eyes. This is because each pupillary pathway receives input from each side past a certain point. That point is the chiasm. So in this diagram here, this is the patient's right, this is the patient's left. This is their iris and pupil. I chose blue simply because I have blue eyes and I like the color blue. So here we go. You're going to want to examine them in a dimly lit room. Their baseline pupil will give you an idea of their sympathetic versus parasympathetic tone. If you remember, the sympathetic system is responsible for dilating the eyes. This helps you see better in dimly lit rooms at night. The parasympathetic system is going to be responsible for constricting the eyes. The sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves run through the ciliary ganglion to innervate the muscles of the iris, the pupillary constrictor and pupillary dilator. If a patient has severely dilated pupils, this might be a sign of amphetamine abuse. So let's move on with our pupil exam. So we're in a dimly lit room, we're looking at the patient, and we're going to need a bright light source or a pin light. So we're in a dimly lit room, we have a bright light source or a pin light, and we're facing the patient. In this setting, their eyes should be dilated bilaterally and they should be equal. If they're not equal at baseline, this is something we call anisocoria, or just a fancy name for unequal pupil sizes. If they have anisocoria, we might suspect they have a permanent or persistent pupillary defect not related to their optic nerve or retina. But here what we're considering or what we're looking for is disorders of the optic nerve and retina that cause what we call relative afferent pupillary defects. So first we're going to shine the bright light in the patient's right eye. We should see both pupils constricting. As we move the flashlight away from the eye, the pupils are going to go ahead and dilate a little bit until when we're not shining it in their eye anymore, the pupils should dilate again. When we shine the flashlight back into the opposite eye, we should as well see both pupils constrict. If we don't see this, there's likely to be something we call a relative afferent pupillary defect, which I will describe in the next lecture. So we're going to take all these slides all together so you can kind of get an idea of what a normal pupil exam should look like. There you go. Hope this has cleared things up and made it a little bit easier for you to understand.